Hello again, everybody. So, been a little bit since we posted a video. Been working on one that's kind of some upgrades and just learning how to do some stuff around the fifth wheel. But it's going to be pieced together over quite a bit of time just to make it interesting. But for today, we thought we'd cover the topic of winter camping. So, looking at the campers, you debate is it a four season? What does four season really mean? Like Grand Design has what they call their Arctic insulation package on this one. But at the end of the day, the 150 series reflections, the number one goal is lightweight for them. So they're still minimally insulated. But here in Georgia, we're just south of Atlanta. Yesterday was 61 degrees. It is currently 32 out and it's going to get down to 16 tonight. So pretty cold. Dropping fast. Yes, it's dropping really fast. So, yeah, so 32, low of 17 is the current prediction, but they also said it was supposed to be four or five degrees warmer than it is now. So we're getting ready to bundle up, go run some water around the campsites, but then I'll show you the few things we've done to prep for the cold weather. And then hopefully this is an uneventful video and we just show you over the next day or two that we got through it fine. If anything goes wrong, we'll document that too though. So we'll go show you the camper setup, what we've got to start with, and then see how these next two days go. Okay, so first thing, water. At least on the grand designs water goes up into the cavity and then that space is all heated so we do have a heated hose that's supposed to work down to like negative 20 or something like that and then I've insulated the campground pipes the best I could so we're gonna leave this on tonight I thought about disconnecting it since it's gonna be in the teens but I kind of want to see how cold it works up to so we'll see if their advertised sub-zero rating works or not so this is plugged in in the camper and then has the little thermostat thing on it. It heats the hose up, so hopefully all that stays thawed for us tonight. And then hopefully we can keep enough water flowing through this to keep this from breathing. But for now, we'll go ahead and start running water on all the other sites and we'll update you later today. Round one out here is done. So we're gonna go warm up and then see what the day brings us. Come on, kitty. Oh, oh, don't cut me. And this is our campground cat. that we're trying to help keep warm. Right. So we got a little box down here with a blanket at least. I'm allergic, so she cannot come in. All right, so it's morning. We made it through the night. Wind got crazy last night, so bad thing about having a slide topper is if it's real windy, that thing just flaps in the wind and makes noise all night so that sucks and i'm still half asleep so you have to forgive me for bouncing around on ideas but we got up we're just opening windows and with these reflection 150s it's just normal single pane windows nothing special as cold as it is that causes condensation which is cold as it is now that causes freezing so notice we have frost on the inside of the windows but anyway since there was so much condensation on the inside and it's so dang cold, we end up with ice on the inside. So I think last night we got down to 17. Well, at least when we woke up this morning, it's 17 degrees, wind chill is like eight. But I'll show you here on the window what we got. This is inside. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to have that inside. <laughs> it reminds me of our old house in Indiana. Yeah, so not ideal. 
but the good news is we have water got up water's flowing so everything we did outside kept that from freezing as far as our tanks go if you're wondering we go three four days on a black tank normally and we we're getting about halfway through that yesterday so I went ahead and emptied all three tanks so both grays and the black were empty and then we figured we can get through this little spell and then when it gets back above freezing we'll be about ready to empty them again the fresh tank we left full just in case the campground water goes out we'd have that as a backup but we do have the enclosed underbelly on this and it is heated and I will say the front storage where you can keep everything in those compartments outside gets really warm the way they ducted it so hopefully that keeps all the fresh and all those pipes going which that has so far the bad side of that well it's not even a bad side it's just something to remember if we're hooked up on full hookups and have campground electricity we just use a space heater that way we're not burning through all of our propane space heater does a real good job of it but then that means the underbelly is not heated so last night we turned the space heater way down and just ran off propane that way we knew the underbelly was keeping all done but yeah, we got water so far. Everything's good on day one. Well, technically day two of the stint. But our first overnight made it. It's supposed to get down in the teens again tonight, so we'll have to continue to see. But here in a minute, when I get all bundled up, I'll go show you outside what we had out there with our hoses. And look, evidence that Shannon will go out in the cold. Hi, Will. Everyone, she doesn't like the cold. She goes out in it, though. As long as I have warm clothes, I'll go out <laughs> in it. So... Our hose set up, we left water running good. Definitely cold, but our heated hose did the trick. So wheelies had water all night, water now. So hopefully we can get about two more days of it and then we'll be back to 50 degrees. All right, just look on the camper over. So far we've had no problems from the cold. But I did notice one thing a second ago that hopefully doesn't turn into a problem when it thaws. If you look down here, our low point drain obviously has had something coming out of it and then has frozen. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that the fresh tank was freezing in the underbelly, expanding, pushing water out. If it did, hopefully it just thaws and fine and didn't crack the tank or anything, but tomorrow's supposed to get up to 50, so that should thaw. So as long as we don't have a puddle of water under there tomorrow, all's good. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so we're on to day three here. We're out of the cold spell. It's almost 50 degrees now, so not too bad out here. Made it through fairly unscathed. The issue with the fresh water tank, I kind of know where I think I made my mistake on there doesn't appear anything's broken or cracked or anything like that so we dodged a bullet but before this cold came in we had it was like 60 degrees and then the front came through and there was tornado warnings and all that kind of stuff so in case we lost power we'd filled the fresh tank all the way up then we figured well fresh tanks full but it's enclosed underbelly we'll just leave it as is so I'm guessing it got close to freezing but didn't freeze but it was right at that border where it was swelling and some water pushed out the overflow and then that's what froze hanging down there but within an hour or so yesterday that it got warm enough that that dropped and fell out of the drain pipe and we tested everything else fresh water was working there's no signs of leaks or anything underneath so it was probably close but i think we dodged a bullet on that it is supposed to get cold again this weekend i think down to 17 on saturday but we at least know for now that the way we're doing it works. As far as a few other things people might be interested. As far as temperatures in the camper, held temperature fine. I mean, I'm sure we burnt through a decent amount of propane. Not a full bottle by any means or anything like that. But we kept the thermostat at 65 through it. We did not have the space heater going. That way we could keep the underbelly warm. But kept it at 65. We were comfortable. It kept everything warm. Everything stayed unfrozen. The heated hose for the water worked well. So at least down to that 20 degree-ish mark, maybe a little bit below that, very doable to camp in these. Not sure I'd go much beyond that, but as long as you're in it and keeping everything moving, worked pretty well. 
But looks like we at least made it through. So we'll wrap this video up. I'm glad it was uneventful. And then keep our fingers crossed for this weekend. But if anything changes on that, we'll update you in the next one. So thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.